I think ULOs are critical, actually, in delivering on the personalisation agenda, because personalisation is all about the individual being at the centre of what goes on. You see people that have other disabilities and you can relate. It gives you that confidence. The greatest asset of ULOs is their credibility. Sustainable user-led organisations are emerging as a key force in the personalisation agenda. Managed and run by disabled people, they're delivering a wide range of self-directed services and providing a representative voice in their local authority. It is important for authorities to have sustainable ULOs, one which have, they have to be more than just a voice, they have to be business ready. We're finding out about the day-to-day -day practices of one of the most successful user-led organisations in the UK. The Essex Coalition of Disabled People, or ECDP, is now in their 15th year and has over 3,600 clients, 50 staff, and a current operating budget of 1.9 million. We use the lived experience, the day-to-day -day experiences of our members, of our clients, to fundamentally inform the work that we do. Really good to see you again, Chris. Yeah, nice to see you, Sam. How's it all going, Sam? Going great. Yeah? Yeah, we've just done six months now. Sally Ann Webb is a support planner at the Essex Coalition, and her lived experience as a carer informs the relationships she develops with her clients. And how are the PAs? Are they all, what, is that all going well? Yeah, it's going OK. We need a, probably need a new PA come the holidays. I work with all disabilities, but I tend to pick up people who learn disabilities with the highest support needs simply because I've got that experience of my daughter moving into independent living. Chris Don came to Sally Ann for help with a support plan for his son who has Down syndrome. Chris's son, who is now 18, has just recently left home to begin living independently. He is, and he's, um, he's slowly improving on his sort of life skills. And, um, you know. She gave us a hell of a lot of reassurance, the main reason being that her daughter had been through this and she'd been through it with her daughter, her disabled daughter. So she knew, if you like, how to put a, a support plan together and what the process would be after that. And that was a great help to us. Particularly, we had have, we have the feelings of guilt of, you know, we're going to leave him. He's been a family person. But, um, you know, she, she reassured us by saying that she'd always got this contact with her daughter. We, start, we started to think quite positively about it after that. I think what makes it different, a user-led organisation different, to other organisations is that disabled people are fundamentally involved at every part of the organisation. So right from the very top, setting the strategic direction of the organisation, through the management and into the people that just deliver the services on a day-to-day -day basis. What that gives you is the experience, it gives you the knowledge, it gives you the expertise um, of disability throughout the whole of the organisation. Basically, I would have as a user-led organisation, the Essex Coalition provide a voice for disabled people in their local authority and are influencing policy and strategy at the earlier stages. At the very top level, just as the ideas are emerging, you know, we can uh, be sitting next to Essex County Council uh, and, and help shape their thoughts. But ultimately, we have to make sure that that's linked in with the values that we have as an organisation as well. With the wide range of services the Essex Coalition are providing, from information and payroll to peer mentoring and support planning, they recognised they needed a workforce ready to share a range of skills and life experiences. We don't have constraints in terms of the way that we think. We're a bit more nimble. We're able to respond and think a bit more creatively. And one really crucial part of that is making sure that we've got the staff available to do that. Elizabeth Bird was working as a personal assistant and carer until Essex Coalition hired her and trained her up to work as one of their support planners. Elizabeth herself doesn't have direct lived experience, but that doesn't mean that she can't therefore get involved in our support planning work. So being a user-led organisation, the other members of staff that we've got who do have direct experience are constantly in contact with Elizabeth. It means that Elizabeth can take all of those experiences on board and apply that in her support planning work. So when I joined and with Sally, she helped me by talking about her own experiences because her daughter's got learning disabilities herself and has her own personal budget. And I shadowed Sally on quite a few visits and I got to understand how it was that she kind of talked to people to relate to them, to get them to open up and to kind of realise her own dreams and ambitions. 
One of the first people Elizabeth has helped with their support plan is Margaret Heffernan, a young disabled woman who has spent most of her life dependent on her mother. Margaret wanted to use her personal budget in ways that would enable her to begin to live a much more independent life. It's just lovely because even though printing's gorgeous, it is very isolated. Yeah. And it does make it really difficult. There's not for, a lot to do, is there, yeah. for you, is there? No. Because you know that your mum's not as well as she no, was. No, it's, it's not. There's not a lot it was important to, to try and put her at ease and to make the process kind of really empowering for her. This whole process about choice and control and giving the person control of their own life and making the most of it. Over the years, Margaret's physical dependence on her mother left her feeling frustrated and with few independent life skills. Life was really bad for her, you know? Really bad, and um, the isolation. You do need to have and opportunities like everybody else. Everyone should be able to do what they want, to, what their dreams. Everyone has dreams and goals and ambitions. You know, we started talking about the kind of few basic things, you know, short-term goals, what you wanted to do, but then we really started developing and talking about the future and where you want to be. And that when you started to realise all of the things that you could do, like going to Ireland to see your family, you know, and developing the skills and possibly living independently in the future. One of Margaret's goals was to find ways to build her confidence, and Elizabeth felt that peer mentoring at the Essex Coalition would offer Margaret an opportunity to start to fulfil her potential. We're running this pilot scheme at ECDP. It's all about um, the new generation of support planners. And they asked me to think of somebody that I thought would be good at this, and I immediately thought of Margaret because I knew her words could be quite powerful. But Margaret was very excited. She was up for the challenge. She wanted to come to share it with people. It's very difficult to put that into words. It's very emotional to think that you can have this impact on someone, but knowing that only you can do it. You think, well, it is a quiet, you're honoured to actually do that. Margaret's coming into the Essex Coalition to share experiences with some of the up and coming support planners and peer mentors. Peer mentoring is crucial because communication is not just about what we say. Sometimes just seeing someone doing something that we have not expected ourselves. Hey everyone, well this is Margaret and I've asked her to come in to talk to you all today. About three months ago I worked with her to create her own support plan for her personal budget and I thought it would be really useful if she came in and talked through her experience of the process. I've found it coming in here and seeing people with disabilities actually working. It must be such an achievement. My personal budget has helped me to achieve and then one of my achievements was to be able to work. And now as a support planner, hopefully, in the making, I can encourage other disabled people, like yourself, mm. who think that they can't work for whatever reason. Because nobody ever said to me, what do you want to, what would you like for the future? Because I never, ever had a choice. And then when somebody offers you this choice, oh, you can do this, you can do that, I think, no, I've always been dreaming it because it's in your head, but you've never ever said it because no, you can't. I think Essex Coalition has been at the forefront of recognising that change, recognising the opportunities of the potential to not only have a very powerful voice, but to also underpin that with a delivery model that's, that is a true partnership, a true co production model with the local authority and just how powerful that is. One of the key areas for us is how we can expand our service so that we can offer it to far more people. The Essex Coalition are now expanding their work by mentoring a number of smaller user-led organisations like the embryonic Cambridgeshire one set up by Chairman Andrew Gardner. The expertise and experience of the Essex Coalition is proving to be an invaluable resource. One of the things that we've taken from ECDP which has been really helpful is around strategy. So how we feed back on issues at a local level, how we run consultations and how we support people to have a voice back to statutory authorities about the types of service that they're, they're providing. 
Um, and that at a strategic level has been really helpful to talk to ECDP and have their input all the way through to see how they've developed that particular model. Because we're very much in the infancy of, of how do we get there. So it's really nice to have you know, your end goal almost sort of mapped out really. And what we're trying to do is work out the process by which we get there. And for me, if there is a good user-led organisation in that area, I think that presents huge opportunities for the ULO to work with the local authority to face those challenges together. ULOs can facilitate new ventures, even new enterprises. It's not just about talking, it's about doing as well. <laughs>